So in my videos about recording classical piano, we've covered miking, and then we've covered miking again, because it's that tricky. It's time to get to the mixing process. Now, you might find it good news that I'm actually not an uber nerd when it comes to audio stuff. I just try to use the basic stuff to the best effect that I can. So we're talking reverb, compression, and EQ. Just the basics. So set up something good to listen on, and I'll see you in Logic. Okay, so here we are in the project. Let me just give you a quick orientation, starting with the music, as we always should. Uh, this is Chopin's Ballade, uh, at least a portion of it, uh, very lyrical. Here it gets very full and saturated, so that'll be a good test of how we're doing. Uh, and then for a contrasting style, we have Bach's Italian Concerto. This, the crisp uh, sort of staccato style of this will be great to test if we're getting a little excessive with our reverb. Uh, so now in terms of the project uh, itself, these this sort of aqua green or blue color is my mid-side arrangement with mid on top and then the, these little darker ones are um, left and right side. And then these orange uh, tracks are what I typical, typically call my proximate mics, treble, bass, and under the piano, the recent edition. And then this voice track is just merely me yammering on, explaining things. So this really doesn't have to do with um, the topic at hand. Um, as I've explained earlier in the video, uh, I really just use very basic things. You can see I've got channel EQ up here. Uh, this is my reverb. I use Waves IR1 for that. And then I put compression on the proximate mics here, uh, as well as the overall project. Um, this gain here, the only thing that's really selected uh, is just to flip the polarity of one of my mid-side channels. Um, this is, again, my voice track um, and compression for the, for the entire project. This gain is only just to get pretty decent levels when, we, when I don't have the reverb on, uh, kind of compensating for that. That's going to kind of go away as we get more toward our finished product. So uh, you've already heard this uh, in its raw state, but let me just give you a little another taste. So um, we can tell, I think, that there's gold in them, our hills, but it's not not quite, uh, you know, it needs it needs some work. But before we get to uh, what I do with these these plugins, uh, I want to do a move that's sweeping the nation called the scooch. And you may notice this this track in here. Uh, this is simply note number 44 on the piano struck fairly forcefully and I use this to line up I'm gonna make these waveforms a little bigger here line up the um, the piano mics to the uh, the mid-side mic arrangement so you can see that because these are further away in the room it took a while for the sound to get to it I've selected the top three which are my, all my mid-side mics. And then just sort of using, let me go even a little further, use that as a marker. I'm now gonna drag all of those tracks over until it's about equivalent. Let's go with that. Now I wanna show you something interesting here. Um, Watch this number here when I play this note. Okay, so we're at negative three. I'm gonna undo that move I just made and play that again. You can see that it's lost 
uh, you know, um, close to one and a half decibels, um, which is a good sign that that move is a good idea because uh, it means the, the tracks are just not, they're not fighting each other. They're not comb filtering each other, at least on that isolated note. And you probably knew where I was going with hitting note 44 that's in the middle of 88. Um, might be somewhat superstitious, <laughs> but uh, it's in the middle of the piano and I feel, feel if I cater to that note, it might be the best I can do to get, um, you know, everything else sounding pretty good. So uh, let's just listen a little bit to the difference that that, that, that makes. Uh, let's do some Bach. Let me select the same range. That's with the move. I'm going to undo it. I'm going to redo it. It's a little bit subtle, and I'm sure you have to be listening on headphones or something, monitoring speakers or something to hear it. But you, it, you should hear that it tightens up and it just sounds more, uh, sounds more crisp. It sounds more like you're like you're in the room. So that's an important aspect. Uh, I will sometimes examine these and see how they are doing and, and do some testing, sometimes reversing the phase um, in mono just to, to see if, if there's any um, uh, phasing issues that are happening there. But these looked actually pretty good. All right, so moving on to how I use these plugins. Um, now, my specific EQ settings are, are catered to my particular mics and my particular piano um, and my particular taste, let's be fair. But um, so I'm not going to go too in detail about, about the specifics, but maybe, maybe it's enough to just show you what I was trying to address. Let me solo out the mic that's underneath the piano, and this is without EQ. So you may have heard that it sounded kind of tubby. So what I've done to address that is kind of the, these, this right here is the, the, the tub region. And so I've pulled that back a little bit. Um, also because the mic's under the piano, fairly close, it gets a bit of proximity effect. So I pulled back the bass a little bit. Um, and ribbon mics, this is again, is specific to the mics I'm using. Um, they tend to drop off above above 5k and so I get a little more crispness when I boost that um, this is boosted uh, 2.5 so let's listen to that same passage with and without EQ Hopefully you hear what that is doing there. Rather than go mic by mic, let me just turn all of these on and uh, we'll just compare this passage with the mics, uh, with uh, EQ and without. And again, this is still without reverb. Now without EQ. I think you'll hear the treble soars a little bit more. Again, without. Okay, so, you know, hopefully that's something you can apply. Maybe that gives you a little more of something to listen to. Um, briefly, uh, with the mid mic, and even some extent to the to the sides too, because they're further away. Um, I decided to just warm it up a little bit by by adding a very sloped bass boost, um, and I felt it was a little splashy too. So I cut down the treble. Uh, I didn't do that in the sides. I just didn't didn't hear that. But I did hear a slight tubbiness that I carved out there. Again, these EQs are specific to my to my needs. But just to give you a look look at them. This is the mid mic. 
the two sides look identical. This is my proximate treble mic. Proximate bass. And then the proximate under that we took a look at earlier. All right. So um, we've got, we've done the scooch. We've gone through EQ. Now uh, moving on to reverb. Now once again, I use Waves IR1. And um, let's just take a peek at, at one of these. So this is the uh, proximate treble mic. Um, if you're not used to this, this probably looks like a whole lot of gobbledygook, but um, the main thing that, I think the main parameters are, I've got the, I've got the tail at 1.25 seconds, and this is so important, to pull back the dry gain. Um, it's, not, it's not enough to just layer on reverb sound, but you really, in order to, particularly to get that concert sound, to simulate the fact that you're, or the, you, the impression that, that you are back in the audience, uh, you want to take that dry gain out. So um, let me give you a better feel for that. So you can see what that dry gain does and just how integral that is to uh, the placement of the instrument with, in, in the sound stage. Uh, so I, now I'm just talking a little more generally, uh, these are my proximate mics. I'm gonna solo them out so that you can hear the reverb that I do on them. What I'm thinking when I'm coming up with reverb for those is that I definitely do want to hear some ambience in the hall, but I want to feel like I'm quite close to the piano and that there's a clarity. Like here is my chance to get to get clarity. So you just to point this out, you'll see the dry gain here is 6.5 for my uh, for my mid side arrangement. They it's a little bit lower, 7.4. Um, and now these numbers may not totally translate to your, to your situation, but um, at least it shows you what, what I'm doing in Waves. Um, let me solo out now my, um, my mid-side arrangement. It's actually got a loveliness to it, but not, not a whole lot of detail. Um, so I think the main thing to grasp from that is I was really trying to create the, almost as if I could pretend I'm just listening to the walls and what are the, <laughs> if these walls could talk, right? So I pretend that I can take out the, the source of, of the piano and just listen to what the, what the hall is doing to the sound. So now let's move on to compression. Uh, as I mentioned before, I I have it on the the, the global stereo out track, um, but I also put them on the close up mics, and this is this is really interesting. Um, this, and it, you can see, it's a pretty hard knee that I've got there, and uh, you know, so anything about well, my thresholds around around eighteen. Um, decibels, anything of, of that starts to get really cut back. And why do I do that? Because these mics are right up in the piano. And so uh, it starts to create an unrealistic uh, 
sense of the the dynamics, or at least how they would function in in a hall. Uh, dynamic ranges get get compressed when you are back from them. Uh, and what's what's kind of cool about this is when you really start to dig into the piano, uh, the compression limits these, and we start to the the ambient mics start to um, to come to the fore a little bit more. Great place to show this is this climactic section here. So this is without the compression. You're probably going to feel when like too unrealistically close to the piano. Turn these suckers on. One more listen. So there you have it. And then here is the compression for the project as a whole, it's a more gentle slope, and this is really my means of of getting the the, the peak the peak volume. Okay, so the the last thing that I would like to show you is just simply the levels. Just a cursory look at this, you see that my proximate mics are the main mics, particularly the ones above the piano, uh, and that my ambient mics are actually brought down quite a bit, um, particularly the the side mics. Um, let's start with the, um, with the proximate mics. I find that the one underneath the piano, it's, it's so potent and I really wanted to just give some warmth, but not, um, oversaturate the texture. So, um, I think this is actually easier to hear if I cut the reverb off, I'll just play with the, the, the level of this. And I, th I think you'll see what I mean. So maybe you saw what I meant when it was equal to the others. It was just a little too much. You could see that I was turning it off and on just to make sure that it was would have been missed. Okay, so I've turned the reverb back on for the proximate mics. Let's explore the levels of the ambient mics. Again, they are quite low compared to, to the, uh, the proximate mics. So you may have noticed that maybe it sounded kind of cool at first to crank up these ambient mics, but when I played the Bach, it was just too too swimmy, you know, too much too much going on. And you notice that the side mics are, are even lower. I've come to prefer those to where you just sort of feel them more than hear them. Let me um, I'll play some selections and turn them off and on so that you see what I mean.
It's like the recording just kind of dries up a little bit without those, but they don't they don't overwhelm you when uh, when they're on. So that's my personal taste. But you have a lot of control. Uh, let me see. So oh, let me equal these out. They should both be at the same level. Um, this is going to give you a lot of control over the wetness of your recording. Your, you know, your taste might be different. You may have thought I should have stopped around there. Fine. Um, this is just, I, I kind of like that, that clarity. And once again, it's really great to listen to recordings that you admire along the process and um, just to kind of keep yourself from going down a specific rabbit hole. Um, very last thing, panning. Um, this is very simple. I've got the sides hard panned mid in the middle. Um, my under mic is also in the middle. And this right here might surprise you. Well, gosh, why do you have that only at 19 and this at 30? Soloing these out, um, really I feel like if I've got a mic fairly close to the treble, I have to have it closer to the center than, than you might think because otherwise it sounds like the, um, if you really lay into the treble, it kind of feels like the piano jumps across the stage to the, to the left. Uh, but I find that the lower, the lower portion is more, it's just more diffuse. And so this is the way I create my sort of stereo gap is by panning the, panning the, the right one. I sometimes even will take it a little further. So I'm just going to solo out these two mics and I'll play with the pan of this and maybe you'll, you'll see what I mean. And even when on when all the other mics are turned on, you'll you'll hear that as well. So that's it. This project is completely mixed. Um, just to give you a more vivid sense of how these two banks of mics uh, interact, I'm just going to play you a few sections. I'll do some soloing out and muting so you can hear uh, what each contribute. So there is a tour of how I uh, mix my classical piano projects. Uh, so now it's time to bounce a file of the Chopin so that I can use it at the beginning of this video. Gosh, how meta is that? So that's my current approach to mixing classical piano in the studio. Um, it will probably evolve. It, 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 even evolved as I was putting together this video. Uh, I, try to, I try to never stand still and to, to keep questioning and questing for the best sound that I can get. Uh, I also find that it's really valuable to listen to great recordings. Uh, for me, a touchstone is, and I mentioned this recording before on the show, uh, Christian Zimmermann's recordings of the Chopin Ballades. Comparing my playing to his, uh, as well as the sound of that Hamburg Steinway that he recorded on, um, you know, it's all very humbling, but, um, but it's good to keep your eye on the prize. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you next time on Inside Pianos. Mm -hmm.